Welcome back to another update on my Pokemon Challenge ROM hack, Kratitopia. I've spent a lot of time in the past week working on my ROM hack, and most of my work has been adding lots of small details to bring the game to life. Since Kratitopia is based in one big city, I want to make sure the place feels lively. To do this, I've been adding tons of different NPCs that you can interact with, and lots of new ways to obtain useful items. I personally always love seeing Pokemon in the overworld of the main series games, so I've been adding lots of new sprites into the game. The fact that many of these NPCs have moving Pokemon next to them shows more of the close bond between people and Pokemon in my ROM hack. Another way I've been trying to bring my city more to life was by working on the interiors of many of the buildings. Lots of these buildings contain shops where you can buy items from or useful NPCs to help you on your journey. One of the buildings I also finally created was the daycare, which is also where you can buy Moo Moo Milks from a seller. The outside of the daycare has lots of awesome Pokemon running around in the overworld, and I did this to make the place feel more lively. Another area of the game I started working on is the beginning of the inside of Molten Crest Mountain, which, if you've seen my previous videos, is a giant volcano that'll lead you to the end of the game. I also finally finished most of the ground club trainers, and I'm about to begin creating the leaders for the ground and steel clubs. Another small character that shows up in the beginning of the game now has his own custom sprite, which I just changed the colors of the rich boy sprites. Eventually, I'd like a fully custom sprite for this character, but the first trainer you battle is going to be kind of like a rival who will show up periodically throughout the game. Another small detail is when you obtain your Pokemon at the beginning of the game, you are asked to set their nicknames, but of course, you can always do this straight from the Pokemon menu. On top of all this, I made dozens of small detail changes and bug fixes to polish the game more. One thing that has been able to help me with this is the fact that it created a small debugging world in which I can teleport myself to different areas of the game to test things out. This is much more effective than using emulator save states because save states capture older edits of the ROM, so when I add certain things to the game, especially setting new game flags, it previously wouldn't always work. And that's mostly it. I'll be live streaming more development of my ROM hacks, so stay tuned for those. Thank you guys so much for your support of the ROM hack, and as I've stated previously, would like to have some kind of downloadable demo or beta by the end of the year. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.